in order to uh, uh, cleanse the palate after having uh, partaken of the body and blood of Christ, after uh, fasting from whatever point in the day you were able to fast, and you realize I'm quite hungry. But we enter the desert with Moses as we embark on the, the course of the fast. And we rely on God to feed us. We, we voluntarily have struggled against the chains of bondage, bondage to sin and corruption and death. In Egypt, Pharaoh being the world that has held us captive. And we hunger for the promised land, which is Christ himself. And we stand there in great need and with zero ability to provide for ourselves. We pack light and we are asked to sojourn for 40 years, 40 days in the desert. Sometimes it feels like 40 years. And we are asked to go and follow Moses, the type of Christ, out of bondage into the promised land. And the Lord provides sustenance for us. And as I stood there eating probably more than was my portion of Sandra's gorgeous, gorgeous <laughs> loaves, she makes beautiful bread. So does Michael's wife, Ginny. She makes beautiful bread. I think we should have a bread off at St. Andrews. We, have, we are gathering people who bake bread. That's cool. As I was eating the bread and drinking the wine to break the fast and to, because I've already communed, that's, I, I'm going to have a bite or two. I'm hungry. The Lord provided that. Sandra walked through the door with a, with a giant loaf of bread, and the Lord provided that which we need for our physical sustenance, sure, but also for our spiritual sustenance. He doesn't leave us alone when he asks us to accompany him into the desert and follow him to the promised land. And so we do that, and we trust in him. And we fall down and uh, make mistakes during Lent. We have to be careful where the golden calves pop up in these 40 days where we will be tempted more than normal sometimes when it seems like our sins that we are quite accustomed to those intractable things and we just keep returning to like a dog to his vomit how often we return to that with such an appetite especially during the time where we are struggling to follow Moses into the promised land. We have to be careful of the golden calf. We have to be vigilant so that when we feel alone or that this trek has been too long, we will not turn away and start to worship the idols and the gods of this world, the gods that this world has to offer us. And those idols will not take up residence in our hearts. And we will not make incense offerings or any other kind. But we will continue to be faithful and to follow into the promised land, which is Christ himself. So in eating the bread that was provided by God, by way of Sandra today, I was reminded of the manna. And we do not embark on this journey and make our way towards Pascha by ourselves or not even as a parish, just together. This is something that is done in the context of Christ and in the context of obedience and trust. We don't do things that are difficult if we don't trust why we're doing them. Otherwise, we would be fools, wouldn't we? We do not follow the golden calf. We follow the Lamb of God who is sacrificed. And we are hungry. My goodness, are we hungry. So when we come to these beautiful days when the, the pre-sanctified lamb is offered, slain, the Passover lamb, and we experience that very minute physical hunger, really, in comparison, I think we're not suffering that much, even if we're a little starving, even if we're a little bit peckish, even if we're, we're rumbly and tumbly. Um, we don't suffer that much. But when we experience that beautiful uh, physical deprivation, 
of, of, of food in preparation to receive the presentified body of Christ. We remember that we are hungry for the, the lamb. And we reject the golden calf. And suddenly our hunger is abated because of the man that is Christ. We place our trust in him. And we ask for him to lead us through these 40 years in the desert. These 40 days in Lent. Lead us to that promised land. As long as we remain faithful to him. He feeds us. He provides everything we need. And there's also food back there. There's soup, I understand. There's the things that we bring in humble offering to God's people, and we break bread together. But we do so in the context of the Lamb who was slain. We come together on these nights because the Lamb was slain for us. Let us anoint the lintels of the doorway of our hearts. The only thing that enters there is Christ himself, and no golden cows, no more idols. Let the idols be smashed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to the Lord.